In this video tutorial, we will be discussing the topic of summing a random number of random variables within a risk analysis Monte Carlo simulation model. This is a technique that is often used in many different types of applications and a broad number of industries. An example might be if, for instance, you were an insurance company and there was a random number of claims on a particular policy, but each claim will have a random size. So, in other words, every car accident doesn't have the same amount of damage. And you need to somehow determine or forecast how much the total claims for that policy might be. There are applications also in product failure analysis, sales, and so on. So, the reason we're making this video is that errors in implementing this particular technique are one of the things we see done incorrectly the most often when we're reviewing our clients' risk analysis models. So let's uh, look at this model. We're going to actually try to do the sum of a random number of random variables with three different methods. First, the parameters. Let's imagine we have a particular event that happens on average about 15 times per year. When it does happen, it has an average or mean severity of 150 and a standard deviation of the severity of 90. We're going to represent the frequency with which the event happens every year as a Poisson distribution with a rate of 15. And the severity we're going to represent with a log normal distribution mean of 150 standard deviation of 90. You can see here we have those two distributions implemented in our model and if I recalculate the spreadsheet you can see each one is taking a uh, random sample. So method one is to simply multiply a sample from each distribution together, call that the total, keep track of it and do that for every iteration of our simulation. Method two would be to say okay let's take a sample from our Poisson distribution, in this case 18, and then let's add up 18 copies, or excuse me, 18 independent samples from our severity distribution. So you can see each sample is actually different, and every time we recalculate the spreadsheet we get a different number of events, and each event has a different severity. And then the third method, and this is unique to model risk is to use something called an aggregate distribution. An aggregate distribution is essentially a way to take both the severity and the frequency distribution and combine them or calculate the resulting distribution if you were to put them together. So we'll have a quick look. This is our the aggregate distribution window. There's a number of types of aggregate distribution uh, methods. This one is called Panger method. There are a number of others that are also implemented in model risk. But you can see here's the frequency distribution. It's a Poisson 15. Here's the severity distribution. It's a log normal, 150 comma 90. And here's their combined or aggregate distribution. So we can put this probability distribution into our spreadsheet, which we've done here. And then when we recalculate it, we can take random samples, all in a single cell, rather than implementing it in this fashion or in this fashion. So in order to save time, I've already run a simulation of 10,000 trials. Let's go ahead and have a look at that. What we'll do first is look at a histogram from each of our different methods. This is method one. This is, recall, method one is multiplying a sample, both each from the severity and the frequency distribution. This has given us a, uh, uh, a resulting output histogram that looks a lot like a log normal distribution and you can also just notice it's got a very long right hand tail. Method two which is where we're summing a random number of random variables. This gives us a different shaped distribution. Looks a lot more like a Gaussian or a normal type distribution. And then let's look at method three which is from the aggregate calculation that we, I showed you just a minute ago, and this also looks a lot like a Gaussian or a normal distribution. Let's, let's overlay these distributions and see, have a look at what they, uh, how they appear. First, we'll look at methods two and three, the aggregate and the random sum of a random number of random variables. You can see these two distributions actually agree very closely. So they're almost identical. 
they sit right on top of each other. Let's add in now method number one, multiplying distributions. And what we can see from this is, and I mentioned earlier, one of the three methods is wrong, and that method is, the, is our method number one, which is where we're just multiplying a sample, one out of each distribution. And the reason you can see that is, is you can see, look, it, how far out to the right and actually how far out to the left relative to the other two distributions this green or method one distribution is. A quick look at the statistics can also confirm this. All three of our distributions, it might be a bit small to see, all three of our distributions have a mean value of about 2,200, but method one has a standard deviation of 1,500, while the other two have standard deviations of about 670, roughly. So you can see that our method number one provides a much wider spread. So we'll close. Actually, let's look back here at our overlay. So the point here is that this green distribution represents the most natural way to do it. What people will want to do is simply say, I can take a sample from each distribution and multiply them together, and I'm good, and off I go. The problem is, and if you think about it, it'll probably make sense, the problem is, is what we are doing in this situation is, for instance, if we have 19 events, we're saying each one of those events is exactly 109.85, which is very unrealistic. How often could you have 19 events that are random draws from our log normal distribution and have them all be the same? The probability is essentially zero. But where the real error comes in is let's imagine we get a sample that's way out on the end of our distribution. For instance, here's one, 411. We're multiplying 411 times 18 events. So that's assuming 411 of these events are way out on the right hand end of our tail of the log normal. And that's just also unrealistic and really has a probability of almost zero. And so not only is this an incorrect method, but it's a method that is used very, very often. And so what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is, is that we have seen often that models will have many of these distributions in them. And then very big, large, important decisions, they have a lot of money at stake, are being made based on these models. And nobody from the analyst who built the model up to the decision maker has any idea that they're making a very important decision based on bad information. So that's why it's very important to do this correctly. Now, without the aggregate distribution, we could certainly use method number two. And when we're looking at a very small example such as this, this seems to work just fine. And you can saw from the results it produces the same um, the same accuracy gives the same, the same answer. But imagine if we had several hundred of these in a model, if we really were trying to understand the risk in a very large portfolio of um, insurance policies, for instance. It would become very cumbersome. The model would run very slow, whereas this would be a much more convenient way, using an aggregate distribution is a much more convenient way to put many of these into a single model. The model runs faster. It's a lot easier to audit. It's more transparent, and we find it works much better in a practical day-to-day -day risk analysis. So I hope you found this interesting. This is error number one in the common mistakes that can happen in risk analysis, and now you're educated and you'll be able to avoid this error. If you have more questions, if you'd like to learn more about model risk, or get a trial copy of model risk, please contact Vose Software at www.vosesoftware.com. If you're interested in having a copy of this model, please also let us know. We'd be happy to email that out to you. And I'd also encourage you to give a call or to contact Vos Consulting. They're our sister company and our main reseller if you have additional questions. And they can be reached at www.vosconsulting.com.